Hello, here we are doing uh, section 2.4 exercises from OpenStax Calculus Volume 1. And these are the directions. For the following exercise, says determine the points, if any, at which the function is discontinuous. Classify any discontinuity as jump, removal, removable, removable, infinite, or other. Okay, so we're going to analyze this, these functions. The first one is 1 over radical x. I want to remind us what these are these jump discontinuities and so forth, removable discontinuities. And here, this is directly copied and pasted from OpenStax. It's open source, so I think I'm totally allowed, you know, absolutely I can do this. So removable discontinuity is a situation where the limit exists, but the limit doesn't equal the value of the function. A jump discontinuity is the limit does not exist, however, the left-hand limit exists and the right-hand limit exists. They're just not equal to each other. And we can see the jump. Infinite discontinuity is where you have, it's a discontinuity at a, um, at a number in the, it's, well, the number could be in the domain or not in the domain, but actually that's not really how it defi it's defined. It's, it's whether the limit from the left is equal to plus or either infinity or negative infinity from the right, infinity or negative infinity. Um, I mean, the picture helps a lot. It just means and there's a vertical asymptote of this infinite discontinuity. Now, if we go up to this, this first one, 131, I am going to start by looking at the domain and writing that down. Now, we know well, this function reminds me of 1 over x, but it's 1 over squared of x. I know x equals 0 is not a domain because 1 over 0 is undefined. But also I know that uh, I cannot have a negative number for x because uh, we're looking at real value functions. So the square root of negative 1 is i. You know, so that's not on the domain. So the domain is all x, x greater than 0. And this is an in interval notation 0 to infinity. And uh, all right, so we have that. And so um, the, the truth is, though, is that f is continuous on its domain. On the other hand, this, as I said, this function looks a lot, the graph to me, to my eye, like the graph of one over x for x greater than zero. Um, what we can do is, uh, in, in particular, there's a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So uh, I think it's sort of a, up to a little bit a little bit of question of style, whether we should write x equals zero is an infinite discontinuity, because there is a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. And what I'm going to do is um, plot a few points. Now, this graph, or uh, this function, takes the square root of a number, and then it's reciprocal. So the square root of one is one, reciprocal is one. I'm going to use four, four is a perfect square. The square root of four is two, reciprocal a half. Nine, another perfect square. The square root of nine is three, Reciprocal one third. Now I have say one fourth, another perfect square, but this time less than one. And um, this squared is half. Reciprocal is two. And I, I mean, I, I'm just a, I'm really big into sketching graphs um, because I think that can just tell me what's going on. Plot some points, and it's not just plotting points. It's it's an awareness that this graph and this function um, has some, you know, has a lot of, has some commonalities, has some things in common with one over x. So, you know, that's, I mean, how do I know I can connect everything? What you can do is, you know, we can use a graphing calculator to, or a, well, from alpha to look at all the points in between the ones I plotted. But we see that also, uh, let me also point out, uh, putting in x equals 0 gives 1 over 0, which is a, an indeterminate form. 1 over 0 is undefined, but it's an indeterminate form, which, which leads me to the conclusion that there's a vertical asymptote. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that uh, there is an infinite 
discontinuity. At x equals zero. I could see someone saying, I'm sort of on the fence on this, like whether I should even say it's a, a, disc, uh, a point of discontinuity because it's not in the domain. But um, anyway, I guess someone's got to make the big decisions. And it's not like I'm a surgeon and someone, you know, <laughs> the stakes are very low here. Okay, so no one's going to get hurt if I... If I write down that wrong answer, okay. So, uh, mm, we can look at this a couple other problems here. This one here um, is, it's a good one. It's also a rational function, but what's the domain of this guy? Well, if you look at the denominator, so... Uh, we cannot have zero in the denominator. Who are we? But we cannot have division by zero. It sounds like it's possible and I just won't allow it. So let me just say there cannot be. So x squared plus 1 equals 0, though, is x squared equals negative 1. And this has no real solutions. So that's not a problem here. We can, we're not going to divide by zero. I mean, there's you put in any number of x and you're not going to divide by zero. The domain is all real numbers, so there are no there are, uh, are no discontinuities. Maybe it's better to write f is continuous for all real numbers. I mean, look. Rational functions, there's a theorem, rational functions, and we did it in class, that rational functions are continuous on their domain. And the domain of this rational function is all real numbers, so it's continuous everywhere. Um, the thing is, I could sketch a graph, but that will be sort of just pulling that out of the air, out of my hat, because we haven't talked about this, but we will talk about sketching graphs later on. But I will also point out that this might not be exactly right. It's something like this. Um, but there's, I don't want to get too caught up in, in, in why I think it looks like this in justification, but it, it, it's something like this. But how about justification is for now, at least, without studying it further, we go look at Wolfram Alpha and enter it, see what they say. But, but anyway, that's, that's, that's roughly what the graph looks like. Not just very roughly. Okay, um, now let's go to this other rational function. And let's again begin by talking about the domain. Well, what I'm looking at is, in particular, um, you know, what we cannot have. We can't have x squared minus x equaling 0 because that gives... Um, zero in the denominator. All right? And that leads to x equals zero and x equals one. So the domain, that's not the domain. It's, it's Those are numbers not in the domain. So it's all x. The domain of f is all x. x not equal zero, not equal to negative, to, to positive one. Now, <clears throat> let me go further on this and write that f of x is x divided by x squared minus x. And it's always, uh, it can't hurt to factor, so I'm gonna factor here. And what I see is, it's not super brilliant, I see that the x's cancel out, and I get one over x minus one. Now notice for one over x minus one, zero is in the domain, I can put in zero. So our function doesn't have zero in the domain, so I need to make a little note of that. It's, it's one over x minus one, x not equal zero. And I am going to point out to all of every, everybody, the audience, that um, this graph of 1 over x, I've been talking about it, looks like this. Oh, man, why am I keeping so cramped? Why don't I just, just let myself have more space? But, oh, well. 
It's, it, this is potentially a much shorter problem, but anyways, <laughs> I'm making it seem really long. Um, so this is y equals one over x, but see, for this guy, it's one over x minus one. So what's happening is that the graph is being shifted to the right by one. So it's the graph of one over x, but shifted to the right by one. And so there's a vertical asymptote at, at one. What would be a nice color? Is it too much to do this sort of purple color here? These neon colors take over. Okay, uh, so is this correct? No, not really quite. Um, it does, okay, I wrote the dotted line for the vertical asymptote, but um, okay, this is not quite correct because this is the graph of one over x minus one, but this is one over x minus one where x is not zero. So I need to indicate there's a hole in the graph. So back to the whole thing here, um, what I have is that um, the answer is that F has a removable discontinuity at x equals zero. That means that the limit exists. You can see that the limit of, of f at zero is negative one, but the value of the function either is undefined or does not equal the limit. Next, f has a infinite discontinuity at x equals 1. And explanation? Well, I mean, there's a vertical asymptote. The, the limit from the left is infinity of 1. It's from the right of 1 is... is uh, <clears throat> from the... Uh, let's, from, from the left of one negative infinity, from the right of one is infinity. I mean, once you sketch the graph, it's, you know, it's really quick. I don't think necessarily, though, if you put this in Wolfram Alpha, they, t they show that hole in the graph there. I think they might, I don't know, somehow ignore it. So we want that one. Okay. This next one's going to take a bit of work here, so I need more space. And to understand this, um, all right, to understand this, I think we need to refer to the graph of y equals absolute value of x over x. And this we did in class. I'm going to briefly go through this. In order to talk about this, I'm going to, or understand this, I'm going to talk about the graph for, um, or just the function absolute value of x. Okay, so, I mean, I think we, we know that one. This is this is the absolute, y equals absolute value of x. Okay, but let's write this as a piecewise defined function. If x is positive, we see that y equals x. We can see that from the, from the graph. And if it's zero, that's true, y equals x. If x is less than zero, y equals opposite of x. And now, oops, now if I divide everything by x and write down the absolute value of x over x, I get x over x is equal to one if x is greater than zero, but not, not equal to zero because I can't divide by zero. And if I put uh, 
to go to the next line, negative x divided by x is negative 1 if x is greater than 0. And it's undefined if x equals 0. And so where does that lead us? Well, uh, where does it leave us? It leaves us with this jump function. I discovered how to do these arrows, and so I'm doing that more now. But Okay, it leads us to this jump function where the function is equal to 1 when x is greater than 0, positive, and negative 1 when, when it's, the function is negative. So we have something like that. Now that's for y equals absolute value of x over x. Here we have our, you know, our, our function that we're trying to examine here um, is, you know, it's not that. It's y equals absolute value of x minus 2 over x minus 2. So it's the same function or in graph, but shifted to the right by 2. So let's see if I can just save myself a little trouble by duplicating and, and doing a shift. problem is I need to sh do these circles again. So I could also, you know, write down the domain, um, but it doesn't ask me to do that in this problem. But um, I will just, I'll just answer the question. F is discontinuous. No, I'll say F has a jump discontinuity at x equals 2. And, I mean, look, look we went over this problem quite a bit or uh, uh, in class. I mean, something similar to it, so I think it's valid for me to refer to this graph of y equals absolute value of x over x. And um, so, I mean, that's what we have there. But, I, you know, I, I think I, I, I talked about really a lot of stuff in, in background of where this graph comes from. So I thought that was okay. Let's see if I can put that in a little box there. Okay, so... Um, I'm sure there's always more room for improvement, but there we go. I was, okay, so I suppose we'll just end the video there. Goodbye.